Hmm. Man, this chair is locked. You want to switch? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Don't so try to get on my good side. <laughs> I'm gonna read these scriptures with all my might. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. Most high in Christ bless. Most high in Christ bless all you brothers and all your sisters, man. Most high in Christ bless. My apologies for being late. The traffic. Sat in traffic for like 40, 45 minutes, give or take. Just welcome to hey listen so some of y'all that plan on staying far from the hotel during passover that's all i'm saying put the commercial out see country gad ah. i know i see a lot of y'all hitting me up oh yeah i found an airbnb and okay israel doesn't listen when, when <laughs> israel be running in passover when we breaking bread <laughs> Talking about, did I miss it? Did I miss it? Ah, traffic, traffic, traffic. But and that's and that's why that's why I'm, I make it our duty to get here early, man, because of stuff like that. But couldn't avoid it this morning. Couldn't avoid it this morning. Um, being that I'm already late, uh, let's just get right to it. Um, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Yeah. Um, brothers, uncover your heads. Sisters, cover your heads. Let's rise and face Jerusalem. Send up the prayers. Thank you. Um. Heavenly Father, mighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, creator of the universe, dear Lord. We come to you humbly, Father God, with bended knee and bow down ears, Father God, for we know, Father God, that thou art all power in heaven and earth. We pray that you forgive us of our sins and the sins of our forefathers, dear Lord. We know we borne our forefathers' iniquities, dear Lord, and we have done worse than our forefathers, dear Lord. But we pray for your mercy. We pray for your compassion, dear Lord, upon thy children. Father, we pray for the sick among us, the lowly in spirit. We pray that you build up their strength, dear Lord. Any infirmities in the bodies, Father God, in the mind and spirit, we pray that you remove it. You strengthen our brothers and sisters far and near. Strengthen our leaders far and near, dear Lord. We pray you protect them and their families. We pray, dear Lord, for the weak in faith, for the unstable, dear Lord, who are tossed to and fro. We pray that you strengthen us on a foundation, which is Christ, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, for, your, for thy son, the Christ Father, for sending him, dear Lord, to redeem the children of Israel. And we thank you for the word, dear Lord, to comfort us, knowing he shall return to deliver us out of the hand of our enemies. We pray, dear Lord, you continue to guide our steps, order our mind, dear Lord, that we may think upon, speak upon, and do the right things according to thy word. Father, we pray that all things we do glorify thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, all praise, all praise. Good morning to you. <laughs> all praise, all praise. Um, um, no, 
No, I'm not streaming on YouTube, unfortunately. Um, you know what? That's I blame Officer Yuri for that because he's the tech guy, and he uh, he did that one time. Brought his tablet, did some kind of concoction. We were streaming from multiple platforms, and you know, he's like, "Yo, my album is more important." You know, <laughs> you know my stuff. That's cool, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, they did, they did steal your stuff. Oh, that's why we stopped. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> <sighs> Memories. Uh, hey, you know I got a bad memory, bro. You got a. I thought it was your album. My bad. My bad. My bad. Nah, yeah, they they broke into Officer Yuri's car and stole his equipment. Hey, Jews be going through it, bro. Jews be going through it, but the Jews stayed in the spirit, though. He stayed in the spirit. He stayed in the spirit. <sighs> but um. Lord's will will get there. You know, I, I don't have Mac money, so I can't do all of that stuff. I got PC money. So Lord's will will get we'll get to that point um where we can I can oh you can figure it out for me. I don't know how to do that stuff. Um Lord's will will get to that point. All right. Um without any further ado, um obviously because I'm late, it was gonna be a little short in class today, but Lord's will, um it edifies brothers or sisters. Um, so today, just really want to get into the book of life. Um, as the topic says, Lord's will, there's a brother online that can scribe for me. So I always say that, scribe for us. Um, and it's, just, it's, it's very basic, very simple, um, because many of us, are a part of it's because we have both one foot in one foot out we're unsure we're unstable we're back and forth i want to listen to this one to that one we tend to forget the life that the bible has given us okay the the what we were set up for prior to this truth was destruction okay that was the path we were headed down and no matter what walk of life it is, I don't care if you were in the Christian church thinking you were living holy than thou, the path you were set on is destruction. But all praises to the Most High for learning and adhering to the book of life, okay? Because we were dead. Give me that. What's that? Proverbs 16? Proverbs 16, I think in 24. No. Yeah, Proverbs... Was it 2416? No, that's the just man for Um what am I looking for again? The wander by the way. Wander by the way, yeah. Um 2116. 2116. I think there was a 16 in there somewhere. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. Mm -hmm. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So Prior to us learning this truth, we were in the midst of the congregation of the dead. We were the walking dead. That that TV show that we see when uh you know we we, we find it entertaining. I know I watched I've watched many seasons of it. Very entertaining. I know the deacons have mentioned it in class. Very entertaining show. And the the show is called The Walking Dead. But the Bible tells you who the walking dead are. The walking dead are those that wandereth out of the way of understanding, out of the way of wisdom, out of the way of God's laws. You are the walking dead. That show is literally about us. It's about us. And we've and we've 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 uh, minimized it to just entertainment. But when we watch things, see things, hear things, we got to listen to it, see it and, and view it with a with a spiritual eye. That's what we have to do. So all praises for the book of life, all praises for the word of God that 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 woke our spirits up to pull us out of this dead state because we're dead. We are we are we're, we're in a dead state. And the minute we start to uh, uh, be on the fence or go back and forth and troubled in the spirit about is this really the truth and should I be here? You're returning back to that dead state. So the Lord gave us his word to remove us from that dead state. 
And this is the book of life. I know the scriptures tell us about the book of life as far as it being the book where your name is written for eternity. That's not the context that I'm using this right here. Okay. This is not the context. Let's go to um, Genesis 1. Let's go to, I'm sorry, 2 and 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground mm -hmm. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The breath of life was breathed into his nostrils. Keep reading. And man became a living soul. And man became a living soul. And man became a living soul. Because prior to that, we're what? We're in a dead state. Now, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7. And bear with me. I'm shooting from the, 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 the bishop says I'm shooting from the hip. So bear with me, y'all. Uh, yes, seven and mm. yes, with seven and twenty-five. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter seven, verse twenty-five. For she is the breath of the power of. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, verse twenty-four. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Mm -hmm. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. So. Wisdom flows through all things. There's a oneness with wisdom and the Lord. Okay. She passes through all things because the Lord is in all things. And the, 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 re, the let's say, for instance, the makeup of the body. And I've mentioned this before. The way the body is designed is the most intricate, the most detailed of any creation there is. Okay. The way if you when you if you go start to starve, the body actually starts to use the fat that's in there in order to let you survive longer. It pulls the, the, the fluids from crazy. But guess what? In the midst of that is wisdom. Wisdom was used in order to get the inner workings done correctly. Just like when somebody builds a car, it takes a certain amount of knowledge to know that this spark plug goes here in order to make this happen. Okay, it's a level of wisdom, worldly wisdom, but a level of wisdom in the creation of that. Okay, so 24 again. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Mm -hmm. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. Mm -hmm. For she is the breath of the power of God. So can you write to Genesis 2 and 7 again, please? Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Mm -hmm and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life so we know you know we definitely know that the, the 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 breath is also the laws so adam did get the laws why because his sons were offering sacrifices unto the lord you have to know the law of sacrifice in order to offer sacrifice so the laws were given from the very beginning but something else adam received Wisdom of Solomon 7 again, verse 25. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 25. Mm -hmm. For she is the breath of the power of God. So Solomon, I mean, excuse me, Adam also received wisdom. He received wisdom. Why? Because wisdom is the breath of God. Hmm. Read that again. So for, do 24 and 25. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Mm -hmm. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. Mm -hmm. For she so is she goeth through all things. Because remember, during the time of creation, the Lord created what? All things. He created the sea. This is why this is why the sea doesn't come past the shore. Why? Because wisdom is in there. Wisdom is teaching. Look, hey, listen, if I go past the shore, there's a judgment because there's a spirit in everything. There's a spirit in everything. Okay, just like in uh, what's that? Uh, Isaiah chapter 14, the trees are going to rejoice in that day. Why is that? There's a spirit in the trees, there's a spirit in the air, there's a spirit in everything. Hmm. 24 again, 
For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Mm -hmm. She passeth and goeth through all things mm -hmm. by reason of her pureness. Mm -hmm. For she is the breath of the power of God. She's the breath of the power of God. Go ahead. And a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. So now, no defiled, it tells you in chapter one, um, wisdom fleeth a, a malicious soul, so on and so forth. Wisdom fleeth deceit. So, but wisdom floweth through all things, and wisdom cannot be corrupted. Just like the laws can't be corrupted. They're one and the same. The laws can't be corrupted because the Lord gave us perfect laws. Now, this is during the time of Adam. This is during the time of, you know, Solomon and David and the prophets when the Lord dealt with them directly. So how do we gain that wisdom today? How do we uh, come alive today? Because the Lord is not telling us to come up on Mount Horeb so he can speak to us face to face. Psalms um, 111 and 10. <clears throat> Psalms chapter 111, verse 10. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. That do his commandments. Now, as I mentioned during the time of Moses, when, Mo when the Lord is telling Moses the commandments, Moses is writing them down in order to give to the children of Israel. OK, so today, fast forwarding those same commandments that are written in the book of life, we have now have it to better ourselves. We now have it to remove us from that dead state. We now have it to purge ourselves from that walking dead mindset. Because this is the book of life. And, and, and just because for and let me give you an example, let's say there is a method that allows you to live but there's guidelines in order for you to get that life that you want to receive so the lord gave that he said listen if you keep my commandments you'll live if you break my commandments you'll die those are the guidelines but what we do is we actually choose death I mentioned before Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. And verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Mm -hmm. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Now, Moses said he set before us because he gave us the laws that the Lord gave him in the mouth. So he says, I'm setting it before you right now. I told you the blessings and I told you the curses. I'm setting it before you this day. The choice is yours. I know a lot of times uh, people say we're born, uh, the Lord gave us free will. He did give you a choice. It's life or death. It's very simple. That's why I said today's going to be a very simple class. Very simple. Because sometimes we get we get detoured from, uh, um, you know, scripture says simplicity, which is in Christ. We get detoured from the simplicity. And a lot of times we focus on, uh, right, the red and blue pill. A lot of times we focus on the deeper things, <clears throat> the deeper mysteries, when it's the simple things that cause brothers and sisters to fall out, or simple things that cause brothers and sisters to go back into the world, or the simple things that cause us to have hatred for each other, so on and so forth. It's the simple, simple things. So this morning being, it's going to be short, shoot from the hip and keep it simple. It's the book of life. It doesn't get more simple than that. It's the book of life. So what do you, what do you want to do? You want to live or that's that name of your album? Live and not die. Live and not die. Damn, bro. I'm doing a promo for you right now. Yo, I need my check, bro. <laughs> yes, sir. Get you some IHOP. <laughs> oh, they got oh, you can eat pancakes right now, too. You're in the spirit. Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Mm -hmm. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you mm -hmm. that I have set before you 
life and death, mm -hmm. blessing and cursing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose life. Like when you're given that option, that's that's the thing. When in that in that show, The Walking Dead, they'll do things like saying, "Listen, we can't go through this part of town because there's a herd of whatever they call them, Walking Dead." And guess what? There's always that hero that feels he can walk through with a with a butter knife and make his way through. Next thing. He gets bitten, and ah, now he becomes a walking dead. If we're setting life before you, why do we continually choose death? Why? Why, why is that? Why do we continue to choose death? Read that again, man. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you mm -hmm. that I have set before you, life and death, mm -hmm. blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose life. Why would Moses encourage us to choose life? Why would he? Because, because part of the book of life, he wrote it. He's like, listen, if you know what I know, everything I'm about to write down and show you and for the latter days, you might want to choose life. You might want to choose life. And guess what? You have the book to show you how to obtain life. But what do we do? We trust in other things. We trust in commit. Let me give you. Let me give you an example. This is where this, the train of thought came from. Uh, um, yeah, a horde of walkers. Thank you, thank you. Um, a sister at my job says, uh, "I was I was studying the break room." She says, um, uh, "She says, what are you reading?" I was actually reading a book at the time. I told her the book I was reading. And she says, um, she says, oh yeah, I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm reading the ISIS papers. I'm, no, she said, I'm gonna start reading the ISIS papers. I said, why? So she gives her reason, give her a little uh, uh, history about the ISIS papers, Gilgamesh epics, all of those things. And she, she basically said, she said, yeah, but I, I can't keep the commandments. I said, why? She said, because they're hard. I said, what's hard? Tell me one commandment that's hard. She says, you know, that whole sex without marriage thing. I said, really? So what our people do is seek those things that's going to allow them to be comfortable in death. Giving her the book, giving her the book of life. But you love Death. Let me tell you about that real quick. Go to um Baruch 3. Baruch 3 and 20. Start at verse 20. Baruch chapter 3, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Young men have seen light mm -hmm. and dwelt upon the earth, mm -hmm. but the way of knowledge have they not known. So young men have dwelt upon the earth. Young women have dwelt <laughs> upon the earth, but the true way of knowledge they have not known. They haven't known it. Hmm? But I thought... The Lord gave them all the way of now. Okay, but go ahead. Nor understood the paths thereof, mm -hmm. nor lay hold. Now, now, even though the path is very apparent, gave her a ton of history, right? Even though, um, you know, uh, the commandments are evident. And I, and I, and I asked her, I said, I, oh, that's what, I, that's what I asked her. I said, I said, so that's a hard thing. I said, question. Is single parenthood a problem in our communities? She said, yes, absolutely. I said, so wouldn't the law of marriage help that problem? She says, yeah, it would. But mm, like, I'm sitting there baffled. Like, okay, so you know what the problem is. You know the solution, but you just can't do that. Okay. Huh. Some people just love death. Some people love death. Read that again. Baruch chapter 4, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Nor understood the paths thereof, nor lay hold of it. Mm -hmm. Their children were far off from that way. So the children were far off from the way of what? Of understanding, of knowledge, of the right paths. They're far off from that. Go ahead. You want to get something? I have some. Oh, 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 we'll get that next. Go ahead. Right. 
Read. Verse 22. It has not been heard of in Canaan. In Canaan. So wait a minute. The way, the right path, the way of knowledge, wisdom hath not been heard of in Canaan. So your Egyptian book of the dead, Damn. your Isis papers, your Gilgamesh epics, all of these writings of the land of Canaan has no knowledge, has no wisdom, has no right paths. <laughs> you see that thing? But keep reading. It gets better. Neither hath it been seen in Taman, mm -hmm. the Agarines that seek wisdom upon earth. The Agarines are the Hagarines, who are also Africans, real Africans, real sons of Ham. Go ahead. The merchants of Moran mm -hmm. and of Tima, mm -hmm. the authors of fables. <laughs> so wait a minute. So the writings of in those lands that we dwelt in when we passed through, whether it be after um, after uh, the Exodus, dwelt in many of those lands in Canaan on the continent of Africa, dwelt in many of those lands. Or when we, because uh, 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 Baruch was during the time of the Babylonians, during that time too, we also fled. So all of the places in those lands that we dwelt, the prophet says, listen, there is no wisdom here. But today, the modern day Negro says, you know what? I know the scriptures say there's no wisdom in these places, but because it makes me feel good to be in my sins, I'm going to cleave unto those writings. Because it makes me feel good. But the thing that you're learning isn't profitable for you because it doesn't allow you to change. Because even though you know the solution, you know the fix of the problem, you says, you know what? I'm not going to fix it. I'm going to still be a part of the problem. So you're choosing death over life. Dang. Read it from the top again. Read it from verse uh, 20 again. Yes, sir. Baruch chapter 3, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Young men have seen light mm -hmm. and dwell upon the earth. But the way of knowledge have they not known. They have not known the ways of knowledge, even though it's right before their face. Just like it says in Deuteronomy 28, grope at noonday like a blind man grope within darkness. It's right before your face. Right before. And I know for a fact and that, uh, that she's encountered Israelites before because I remember when she first started at the job, the first thing she said to me, you're a Hebrew Israelite. That's what she said. I said, oh, yeah. I said, so are you, sis. That was like, you know, two years ago when she started. But nonetheless, she the only way she would know that is because, of course, my, I, have my fringe, I have my fringes on. But nonetheless, she's encountered Israelites before. So I'm sure what I'm telling her isn't foreign because you obviously know how to recognize an Israelite by his apparel. Mm -hmm. So something had to come out in conversation at some point and it just you know it, it, it here's the thing i know we always say someone has to be the two-thirds but at the same time it's it's almost saddening that we're so lost that the the solution is right in front of your face and you say you know what i don't want it i don't want the solution hmm so read that from the top again, verse, <clears throat> verse uh, 20. Young men have seen light and dwell upon the earth, but the way of knowledge have they not known. The way of knowledge they have not known. We have no clue about the way of knowledge. Go ahead. Nor understood the paths thereof, mm -hmm. nor lay hold of it. Their children were far off from the way. Mm -hmm. It has not been heard of in Canaan. So the way of knowledge, the way of wisdom is not known in Canaan. It's not known there. So so it is no there's no such uh, a Pan-African or 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 ISIS papers or Gilgamesh epics or the 140 whatever whatever. The scripture says there's no knowledge, no wisdom, no understanding of the right path in Canaan. 
So any book that's exalting uh, 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 the, the people of that land, it's, it's garbage. It's garbage. And it's this my thing. This, and this is why many people hate the Israelites. Because we can go into these scriptures and prove every philosophy and ideology you believe is a daggone lie. It's a lie. Don't be mad at me. Send the most high a text message. <laughs> He's the one that's telling you your stuff is garbage. I'm just the messenger. That's all I am. I just, we just, we just relay it to you. That's it. Finish it out, and I know you had a script. Yes, sir. It has not been heard of in Canaan, mm -hmm. neither has it been seen in Tamar. Mm -hmm. The Agarines that seek wisdom upon earth. The, the Agarines are seeking wisdom upon earth. <laughs> but guess what? The Lord didn't give it to them. But go ahead. The merchants of Meran mm -hmm. and of Timon, mm -hmm. the authors of fables. The authors of fables. Jump up to um verse 36. Verse 36. He has found out all the way of knowledge. Because the Hagarines are looking for knowledge and wisdom, right? Go ahead. And have given it unto Jacob, his servant. But he gave it to the children of Israel. That's why there's no knowledge and wisdom in Canaan or under the, uh, uh, or by the Hagarines or any of those lands. There's none. There's no knowledge of wisdom. Why is that? Because the Lord only gave that to the children of Israel. Finish it. And have given it unto Jacob his servant mm -hmm. and to Israel his beloved. That's who he gave the wisdom and understanding to. That's who he gave life unto. We just read it in Deuteronomy 30. Moses gave us life or death. And Baruch is reiterating it again uh, in, the, in the latter times. Listen, all of the wisdom and understanding, all the knowledge of the earth, he gave it to the Israelites. He didn't give it to the other nations. That's why, listen, that's why y'all, their ideology can be dismantled so easily with the word of God. They're perfectly fine with the word of God being in the Christian church, being in the Islamic mosque. But the, as soon as it's in the hand of the Israelites, we got a problem. <laughs> oh, man, we got a problem. Okay, which is, which is, what script you need? Um, 1 Timothy 5 and 6. Because when you're talking about the sister, uh, it all it all boils down to sin, which is pleasurable, and to, and tying it in with the the Walking Dead theme that you had. Um, it, it says, "But she I that First okay. Timothy five and verse six, but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth." Because that's the state of our sisters today. That's the whole Cardi B, you know, the whole. Uh, just the whole wave. You mean let me be a hoe? Yes. Her, right sorry. there. I had to slip that in. <laughs> but that's she we under, she understands that in our community, that life is death. You know, the sex without marriage, or I can't do that. But you understand that it brings death in our community. Mm -hmm. And even though you're you're fully alive, you know, breath in your body, but spiritually you're dead, mentally you're dead to your nation. You're dead, right? Right. You know, and, and unprofitable, very unprofitable. Nothing, you know, that you that you bring forth as far as wisdom is concerned. Because guess what? She's teaching that to the other young sisters that she's around, mm -hmm. the ISIS papers. Mm -hmm. But they got they all gonna read around. They gonna light incense. They gonna study it. But and be, act like a bunch of witches, absolutely, <laughs> and all have three baby fathers, right? Right, right, right. That's right, it, right, right, right. All praise, all praise. Um, uh, real quick, go to um, Baruch 4 and 1. Go back to Baruch, yeah. Baruch chapter 4, <laughs> verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life. This is the book of the commandments of the Lord. The book of the commandments of the Lord. Let me read from the top again, bro. This is the book of the commandments of God mm -hmm. and the law that endureth forever. So the laws endure forever. Go ahead. All they that keep it shall come to life, mm -hmm. but such as leave it shall die. Moses said, I give you. I lay before you life and death. 
Fast forward during the time of the Babylonians, Baruch's showing the same thing. All they that keep the commandments come to life. All they that leave the commandments, what is it? The end of it shall die. But keep reading. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Mm -hmm. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. So now, what, you, what you're going to see time and time again throughout the scriptures, and that's, that's a beautiful thing about understanding who you are. Because prior to knowing who you are, you read the book as an all-inclusive book. As if the Lord is talking to the whole world. As if when Christ walked the earth, he spoke to the entire world. No. He didn't, he didn't go to the whole world. When the, when, the, when the prophets walked the earth, they went to the whole world. You won't find those scriptures. They taught specific people. But now understanding who's who in the scriptures, understanding the general populace of who's being addressed during certain times, it'll give you a better understanding of a uh, context. You know, let's say context, right? Context. Keep it in context. Context does mean a lot. Go ahead. Turn the old Jacob and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, mm -hmm. that thou mayest be illuminated. That you may be illuminated, that you may be that light. You may be uh, a change in the twinkling of an eye. Go ahead. Give not thine honor to another, mm -hmm. nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. Now, real quick, 2 Timothy 3.16. So here's the thing. The book of life that allows us to rise from was only given to one people okay and this scripture actually shows you the thing that is profitable we're not even supposed to give it to a strange nation i'm gonna say that again the thing that's profitable we're not supposed to give it to a strange nation because there are some who actually teach in predominantly edomite areas as if they're going to win them over. Like, what's the purpose of going to those predominantly Edomite areas? Like, I, I don't get it. Maybe I'm missing something. Because the scripture says, the thing that is profitable unto you, don't give it to a strange nation. Don't, don't do it. So let's see what that, that thing that is profitable unto us. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16. Come on. All scripture is given by inspiration of God mm -hmm. and is profitable for doctrine. Can you go back to Baruch four yes, and three, please? Baruch chapter four, verse three. Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. So this is why sometimes many will say, um, you know, we, we, we get a ton of that. Edomites saying, I want to debate y'all and yada. When you look them up, their church is all Esau. And what, what profit would we have going and teaching a Edomite church? Now that doesn't mean you won't go somewhere and there's there won't be Edomites there, but the but the, the general populace should be our people because that's who the Lord told us to teach. In Baruch, he says, Don't give that which is profitable unto strange nations. Because when you do that, you're actually giving away your glory and your honor. When you give it to those other nations, you're giving away your glory and your honor. It's not, it's, this, this is what, listen, let me tell you something. A lot of, um, right, right, right. A lot of, um, of views on our, on our videos and our, our classes and stuff. A lot of them are Edomites. Oh yeah. So you think Psalm 64, when it says he does a diligent search, he's not diligently searching. <laughs> oh, he does a diligent search in science. Yeah, okay. He makes threat assessments. He, he's always making threat assessments because in order for them to uh, uh, use what we say against us as far as, you know, oh, let's pick up guns and, oh, let's uh, fight against them. No, they have to be watching 
in order to know if that's what we're saying. Come on, y'all. Come on. So read that again, and then I want uh, Romans 3. 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God mm -hmm. and is profitable for doctrine, mm -hmm. for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Mm -hmm. So the thing which is profitable is all scriptures. I didn't say that. All scriptures is what's profitable. So when the scripture says, don't give that which is profitable unto strange nations, it's talking about the scriptures. Don't, you shouldn't be sitting there trying to teach. And a, a lot, let me tell you something. A lot of you, I say newer brothers, newer sisters, feel like you have something to prove. Which baffles me. You're going to sit there and teach Edomites about all the atrocities they did and yada, yada, yada in, in a certain setting, an intimate setting, let's say in the break room, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, the person who you're telling that to, the one who you clock in at their job looks just like that person. What's, the, what's, what's profitable about telling that Edomite at your job or your school or whatever, uh, uh, all of the inner workings of these scriptures? Scripture says, don't give it to a strange nation. It's not going to profit. Uh, 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 it's not going to be profitable to them because they can't repent. What it does is it fuels your ego because you feel like you just told him off. Uh, they don't give a dag on because they still rule over you. They still rule over you. That's why the scripture says, don't give that which is profitable to a strange nation nation don't give it to them because the way the lord set it up is they are on top and we're on the bottom you telling them that what is it going to do i understand if you at camp and they come up talking mess you got to blast them but it's not for you to be like yeah see look i'm gonna show you i'm gonna break down deuteronomy 28 too because we're the children of israel you know that right let me show you they sitting there eating their cheetos like look at this nigga <laughs> He's still being submissive to me where he has to uh, uh, let me in on anything he's doing behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Listen, sometimes that thing is a mind game. You're so used to being subservient, you feel the need to express and to show them what it is you now know. As if you can't learn something without sharing it with the nations. Is there something wrong with that? No, because you're still in a subservient spirit. Hey, hey, what's your what what are you what are you into? What do you mean? What what do you what do you believe in? The Bible. Well, I mean, yeah, but what is it? The Bible. Like what? Have them walk around guessing. Yeah. Why why you why do you feel compelled to have to show them or tell them something? Why? Because you're still in a slave mentality. The difference is you just know who you are because you feel the need to explain yourself to master. You don't have to explain anything. I mean, honestly, if you like getting written up at work or something, you got to tell them what was going on. That's, you know, but sometimes we just, I understand we have a zeal, but you got to curb that thing, man. Curb that thing. Then you ain't got to tell them nothing. Let them guess. When they're sitting there doing a diligent search, do they tell you, oh, yeah, we're in all of your online classes and we're watching everything you're saying? They don't do that. But we want to break down everything to them. Correct. Oh, I did. I did actually did say something. Romans 3. I did. You're right. Mm, Romans 3, verse 1. Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Mm -hmm. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Unto them were committed the oracles of God. We've been reading that quite a bit. The Lord gave all, all, all ways of knowledge. He gave it unto who? In Jacob and to Israel. The Lord committed the oracles unto who? Unto the children of Israel. That's Old Testament and New Testament. You're going to see that time and time again. Because they have the, the, the prophets, the apostles have to keep pushing it into you about the book of life. That's, that's what's going to be profitable unto you. But a set of a lot of us, instead of applying that which is profitable, we want to 
give it to the people the Bible says not to give it to. What is that going to change? You tell Ned that you're an Israelite and you're on, uh, he, the only reason he's over you is because you broke the commandments. Ned is still eating his Cheetos going back home to his downtown loft. Okay. And, and listen, Ned is more safe walking through the hood than you are. We see it all the time. Ned is way more safe walking through the hood than you are. But you feel the need to tell and share something with Ned. No, nah, I ain't sharing nothing with you. Hey, what's some things on your shirt, fringes? Why you got them on all your shirts? Because I want to. Fashion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stylish like that. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. Read that again. Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, mm -hmm. chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Unto them were committed the oracles of God. All the writings, all the prophecies of God were committed unto them. There's a prophet in it. Go ahead. For, for what if some did not believe? So what if some of you don't believe? Go ahead. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Mm -hmm. God forbid. No. Just because you don't believe that uh, this is the book of life, that's just because you don't believe that um, the word of God was only given to the Israelites, just because you don't believe any of these things, is it going to change anything? Absolutely not. Go ahead. Yay. Let God be true, but every man a liar, mm -hmm. as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying. Now, this is very important. The scripture says that we may be justified in our sayings. This is exactly why uh, the bishop, deacons, captains always tell brothers, stay in the scriptures because they, they do a diligent search. They do a diligent, diligent search. They listen to what you say and what we say has to be scriptural. That what? We may be justified. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Go ahead. And mightest overcome when thou art judged. It says, and mayest overcome when we are judged. Because there's going to be a time when we're going to be judged of men and, of course, judged in the Lord. The Lord is going to ask us, why, why, why did you say all of that? Well, you want to be the one to say, I said it because it's according to your word. Same thing, when you're brought before the governors of this land and this earth or whatever, hey, why did you say that? Well, I was actually just reading the Bible. I remember one time we were um early on we started going out teaching downtown here in Atlanta. Um, they used to always call the police on us all the time. And one of the times the, the sister said, she lied to the police, said, they call me a hoe. So the cop came over, like, yo, uh, y'all, y'all called a hoe. We said, no, we actually opened the Bible, showed the officer, we said, whore because we were reading the scripture. The scripture says whore. The cop was like, like he toned down now because he was on level 10. He wanted to lock us up. He was like, damn. Because we're justified. Now, I've, I've heard and I've actually corrected some brothers who are on the street and they say, are you out here looking, you know, looking like a hoe or whatever? Mm -mm 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 -mm. You get pulled down for that. Mm -mm. Don't say that because what? You won't be justified. You can't go into the scriptures and, and find that. You got to use what the scripture says. So all of you brothers, all you teachers, make sure you're saying what the scripture says. Because I'm telling you, they be, that, those two guys, they was itch, they was, and all of them are like that. Every time they've been called on us, they, they want a reason to lock us up so bad. I mean, so bad. And there was even a time where the, 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 it was crazy that day The everyone turned us turned on us on the street. And it, it, remi it actually reminded me now I'm thinking about it of when Pilate, because he feared the people. He gave he gave up Christ or he. He let them uh, crucify Christ because he feared the people. One time the police was just they pull aside. I was like, listen, let me just. 
handcuff you, put you in the back. I'll ride you down to the train station because there's going to be a riot out here. It was that bad. He was like, listen, it'll, it'll calm them down. He said, you're not arrested. And the, yeah, he, the brother, he put the brother in the back, rode him to the train station. After camp, we left. We met him at the train station. We were good. But the people were in such an uproar. They wanted blood. Like, they wanted blood. And the officer was like, you know, I see y'all here every week. I know y'all didn't do that, yada, yada, yada. He's like, listen, they are going to go crazy out here. They're going to go crazy. He said, like, I see it. Let's just do it this way. So ain't no reports, no nothing. We can just calm the crowd down and y'all will be good as well because they're going to, he said, they're going to try to hurt you. He said, eventually they'll, they'll act like they will, when we leave, they act like they're leaving, but they're going to try to, they're going to try to do something to y'all because they want blood. And he said it, and she, well, she said it just like that. I was like, Damn. we, we are living in the time like our forefathers. This is exactly what they dealt with. But I'm sorry, read that again. I went on a little rant. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For what if some did not believe? Mm -hmm. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Come on. God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. Mm -hmm. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sins. It says that thou may be justified in thy sins. Because even though we show them this and we said it because of this, the people, they did not care. They wanted blood. And it, I, I kid you not, it had to be about 40, 45 people out there surrounded us going crazy, going crazy. Drug dealers. Now they was like, oh, yeah, everybody got riled up. Drug dealers came over getting riled up. Yeah, they always out here talking mess. Yada, yada. Yo, this dude. Oh, my Lord. What's his name? Chauncey. That nigga Chauncey. Oh <laughs> That's man. Name. That Cha Chauncey, the new the news reporters came out. Chauncey was like, Yeah. And that's why I came and bring my grandkids out here. It's like, and matter of fact, they pushed me. You sitting out here like Chauncey, you're out here every week buying drugs. <laughs> You've never been out here with kids. We see you every single week, Chauncey. Why are you lying right now? It was the craziest thing. Chauncey, you we Chauncey, you a liar. You a damn liar. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Read that again. Man. God forbid, yea, let God be true and every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mayest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. And overcome when we're judged. Um, Gerard, yes. The police did, but this is a different part of town. The police did tell us that. Creflo has the police department in their pocket. Yes, yes. But that's where, what I'm told is in Atlanta, Creflo is on Old National. Well, that's still Atlanta, right? Old National is Atlanta? Yeah, but it's like. That's the College Park. Yes, I was good. It's College Park? College Park. I think, yeah, that's College Park. But yeah, so yeah, they did tell us that. The police did tell us that Creflo pretty much owns that police department, which is right outside of Atlanta, like 10 minutes outside of Atlanta. Um, mm, Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 6. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 6. For though a man be never so perfect among the children of men. So now, here's the thing. Many of us will make mistakes. We'll make mistakes. We'll mess up. We'll fall seven times, six times, a hundred times. We'll make mistakes. Read it from the top again. For though a man be never so perfect among the children of men. So a man never so perfect among the children of men. Go ahead. Yet, if thy wisdom be, be not with him, he shall be nothing regarded. So now, that wisdom and knowledge that the Lord gave us, we just read it in Romans 3, we read it in Baruch, we read it over and over, and we'll still read it. If you don't have a level of wisdom with you, you will be regarded as nothing in the sense that you'll easily go back into the world. You'll easily fall in faith, but you have to have a level of wisdom to know that, listen, I, I fell, but I'm not going to stay down. That's, listen, staying down should never be an option. 
staying down should never be an option. There's many, um, there's many of us who actually, listen, let me tell you something. There's brothers and sisters who need medication. I'm going to tell you straight, need medication, but you fail to get that medical help that you need. I'm talking about mentally. I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about mentally. You need medication. You come into the truth, you stop taking medication altogether, cold turkey, then you bug out. Now, that's not to make fun of or, um, you know, to put anyone on the spot. But what it is is, so that's a mistake. Like, listen, no, take your medication until you find something that's less you know, toxic to your body, maybe natural, natural um, um, uh, remedies, so on and so forth. But that mistake can't be replicated. You have to have enough wisdom to say, okay, you know what? Me not taking my medication was not a good thing. Let me keep taking it or, or lessen the dosage or something along those lines. Let me consult with my doctor because I don't want this to happen again. Okay, it's at least a level of wisdom. It takes a level of wisdom for uh, uh, the sister I mentioned for her to say, you know what? Okay, it is a problem in the community. It's an issue. You know what? Let me at, at least let me look into that. Give me um hold on hold on. We're gonna come back here. Go back. Go to Acts seventeen eleven. Acts chapter seventeen verse eleven. These were more, more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So when you when the when the wisdom is brought out, you should at least have enough wisdom to search the scriptures to see if those things are actually so. The scripture says, Forsake not a physician, for he is of the Lord. Oh damn. I stopped taking my medication because I thought all doctors were of the devil. But the Bible says it's of the Lord. Why? Because we need to be nourished in these times. We're in the land where we're being nourished by our oppressors. And sometimes, listen, maybe some of us, like I see somebody mention um, schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is actually hereditary. It gets handed down from generation to generation. Some of these things are hereditary. So because your family has a history of it, you might need to operate in a certain uh, 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 in a certain way in order to whether it be lessen your chances of getting it or a, a healthier uh, alternative but you have to have a level of wisdom you're going to make mistakes we're going to make mistakes but the wisdom should never deplete to the point where you can't fix it or you can't get up from falling should never be that go back to wisdom solomon and read it again was in the Solomon chapter nine, verse six. Mm -hmm. For though a man be never so perfect among the children of men, mm -hmm. yet if thy wisdom be not with him, he shall be nothing regarded. It says, if the wis if wisdom is not with him, he shall be regarded as nothing. And if you're nothing, but what what would the Lord have to do with you? Because you're not regarding his laws. You're not regarding his ordinances. You're not regarding his statutes. You're not regarding his testimonies. You're not regarding his power. So what's the what's the purpose? We're going. Well, listen, we're going to make mistakes, and guess what gets us out of those humps and out of those those ruts? It's the book of life. The book of life tells us that a just man falls. The book of life tells us that we're going to make mistakes, but you must have enough wisdom in order to be profitable. It says it shall be none regarded, meaning there's there's no there's no use for you. There's no use. You have to have enough wisdom to still be useful to the most high. <laughs> listen, we should we, listen. That's, that's, that should be in our prayer to be useful and profitable servants unto the Lord, because the minute you have and you you have uh, you don't have enough wisdom to be of use for the master's use some scary stuff um psalms 118 
Start at verse 1. Psalms chapter 118, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, mm -hmm. because his mercy endureth forever. Mm -hmm. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel say that. Remember, we read it earlier. Don't give it to a strange nations. Don't give what is profitable to strange nations. So let Israel rejoice. Let Israel say his mercy endureth forever because he's only merciful unto the children of Israel. And some of you may say, I'm on the bottom. I'm, I clean toilets. I, 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 gotta, I work in uh, fast food. I you know, I got to I got to I work in retail. I got to tend and get and provide to the nations. That's oh, listen, if he I want you to think about this, if the Lord is chastising his children this way, what is he going to do to the other nations who he has not regarded as his children? It says that it was the wisdom of Solomon. It says that yes, sir. wisdom of Solomon who scourged them 12 more. Um like 16 or something. I'm stuck with the number 16 all day. Um, yeah, Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 22. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12, verse 22. Therefore, whereas thou doest chasten us, thou scourgest our... Chasten us. Excuse me. Therefore, wherefore thou dost chasten us, thou scourgest our enemies a thousand times more. Now, the scripture says... The Lord chastened us. He chastened us, the children of Israel. But he'll scourge our enemies a thousand times more. So you're looking at, yes, we work sometimes menial jobs, last hired, first fired, the things we have to suffer. But the scripture says that you have no idea what he's going to do to the enemies of the Lord. You have no idea to the point where you can't even fathom it because at some point we're going to, we're going to, um, right now we struggle with the book of life. Oh, I can't, I can't do this or I can't do that. Or, or I'm staying out of the body because I'm still working on some things. I'm still working on some things. Hmm. What you're doing is, Instead of getting the help from the book of life, you're still finding comfort in death. That's what you're doing. So now you, you don't understand that, okay, I'm on the bottom right now, but your rejoicing should be is, man, watch what he's going to do to the damn heathens. Oh, wait, wait. you think. The Lord is going to do, or the Lord did, all that he has done to us. And the heathens are going to get off easy? And those are not his children? <laughs> uh, read that again, bro. Therefore, <clears throat> whereas thou dost chasten us, thou scourgest yes, our... Verse, yes, verse 22. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 22. Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, Thou scourgest our enemies a thousand times more mm -hmm. to the intent that when we judge, we should carefully think of thy goodness. Mm -hmm. And when we ourselves are judged, we should look for mercy. So when we ourselves are judged, we should look for mercy. As when we judge, we should judge mercifully. Okay. Um, real quick, go back. Oh, Psalms 118. Yes, That's sir. where we were. Psalms chapter 118, verse 1. Read verse um, 2. Verse two, mm -hmm. let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Mm -hmm. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Mm -hmm. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. Mm -hmm. I called upon the Lord in distress. Mm -hmm. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. Mm -hmm. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Mm -hmm. What can man do unto me? That's, that's, that's heavy. Now, in the book of life, it teaches you to be fearless. It teaches you to be uh, uh, compassionate to your brothers. It teaches you charity. It teaches you love without dissimulation. It teaches you uh, 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 
for how to forgive your neighbor. Now, these are all things that are profitable for life. Because here's the thing. There's some of us who have come from some, some really messed up families, some broken families where your mother treated you worse than her enemies, your father hated you. These are the families that we come from. But then this is you on, uh, 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 what do you call those? Um, you on one of those uh, uh, f uh, websites trying to find your mother that abandoned you in a garbage can because she was on heroin, because she was on crack. You online looking for her, putting your, your picture next to the person's profile picture, see if y'all look alike. I, I see these things on TV. Then you go and try to find them to tell them. Oh, you know that dude uh, in that video? Um, he always used to be a boxer. He's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that guy. The brother was was like, like, why were you never there for me? Why? We we show so much compassion to the unrepentant. We show so much mercy to the unrepentant of our people. But the repented, I can't forgive him. Even though you just spent the last three years of your life looking for him. You found you found your unrepented father or mother or brother, whoever, and you made amends, you forgave them, you hugged, and you're on TV and all of that stuff. You're in the truth now. And your brother stepped on your foot. You're like, I can't forgive that nigga. And, and, and y'all try to convince us that y'all that y'all really believe? Come on, man. Let's stop playing games, man. Read that again. <clears throat> Wisdom, I mean, excuse me, Psalms chapter 118, verse 6. Mm -hmm. The Lord is on my side. Mm -hmm. I will not fear. Mm -hmm. What can man do unto me? So the Lord is the Lord shows us in the book of life, we have to walk in that spirit. What shall we fear? Like when I when I went over last week, um, what was last week's class again? Uh it was like a part two. Part so. two of the Marcus Malcolm. But I, I want the name some of the fear of black and brown. The fear unity. of black and brown unity. You saw you saw my notes. Wow. <laughs> the fear. So, and I went over that in Acts in um Isaiah chapter 8, which says, Don't fear their confederacy. So over and over again, the Lord will tell us not to walk in that spirit of fear. Because why? Our trust should be in him. So read that again. The Lord is on my side. Mm -hmm. Why? The Lord is on our side. Why should we fear? Why should we fear that they're in our classes right now monitoring everything we're saying? Why should we fear that they actually cut our YouTube views? I'm going to say that again. Deacon Asaph's class, the response to the missing, uh, missing, our missing sister, Sister Joy, initially when we looked at it, it was 17,000 views. Like two days later, it was cut to 13,000 views. They've been doing it in Atlanta for a long time. They cut your views. Why? Meaning they know the more views that it shows is the closer it goes to getting viral or something like that. So they keep cutting back your views so that you don't get to that viral state. Because listen, don't think that Million Man March, not Million Man March, the Lord help me, <laughs> the, Mem the Memphis Milestone, when it went viral, they were like, who, who in the head? But guess what? My mine went viral. Off, uh, Captain and Mariah's went viral. And then like two people from the world that were there filming, theirs went viral. So they couldn't, they, they, they were trying to cut back on ours, but they didn't know about the people that were filming as well. Yeah. They're like, oh no, who, let, who the hell let that through? This is what they do. They cut back, cut back, cut back, so it doesn't get to the point of reaching the masses. But guess what? We don't fear that. Because the Lord is going to allow it to prosper in the manner in which He wants it to prosper. Right. That's not that's not our call. Am I thing looking crazy? There we go. Go ahead. Read. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? What can what can man do unto us that the Lord has not purposed? Go ahead. The Lord taketh my part with them mm -hmm. that help me. Mm -hmm. Therefore, shall I see my desire upon them that hate me? Uh, I read. 
It is. Oh, he says, therefore, I shall see my desire upon them that hate me. Meaning they're going to get judged. Go ahead. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Go ahead. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Mm -hmm. All nations come past me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. Mm -hmm. But in the power of the Lord, I will destroy them. Go ahead. Dang. That's strong. <laughs> they come past me about, yet they come past me about. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. So ultimately, all of these plots, all of these confederacies, the, the, uh, the watching us, whatever the case may be, the Lord is going to allow the children of Israel to prosper and reign over those that have so much evil intentions towards us. That's what God said. But keep reading. Verse 12. They come past me about like bees. Like what? Bees. Now, when a swarm of bees is attacking someone, is it in a straightforward line? Like they fly through a tube directly to your face. Like you know exactly where they're going to sting you or where they're going to attack you from. Man, they be climbing up your pant leg, in your ears, in your nose, everywhere, everywhere. They land on you, climbing down your shirt. So sometimes we, like those classes, was, I only, I was pin, I, those last two weeks, I pinpointed certain aspects of um, infiltration certain aspects and attributes of those who infiltrate, so on and so forth. But that was just one dimension. The scripture says they come past us like bees. That's why they have conferences against the Hebrew Israelites. They have radio shows against the Hebrew Israelites. They have the police that hate our guts that watch every move we make. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. They, they do it on YouTube. They do it on Facebook. Listen, almost every week they do something to the, to the, to the, new, to the feed for Patient Saints Radio. I don't. I'm just saying. I know we blame the tech team, but sometimes it's not even them. Sometimes it's not even them. Look at this, brother. He a part of the tech team. So, yeah, I said it, brother. Sometimes it's not y'all. But y'all still going to get the blame. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. They can pass me about like bees. Mm -hmm. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. Mm. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. At the end of the day, the children of Israel are going to prevail. Go ahead. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall, mm -hmm. but the Lord helped me. So here's the thing. A lot of times, I know we get frazzled by some of the events that happen are, are happening that will happen at the end of the day is for the good of the lord it's his will his will is done you listen no matter how much you're attached to some people it the lord's will is that that person or those people cannot be here though it hurts though you're upset though you miss them it's listen that decision of the lord is bigger than you it's bigger than you. A lot of times we try to hold on to these attachments. No, the Lord said, listen, listen, that, that, and I went, and I went over it in class. Some, their spirit ain't right from the beginning. And the Lord deemed them to believe a lie. Who knows better? You or the Lord? Hey, better. Who would you rather? You or them? <laughs> hey, go ahead. Verse 14. The Lord is my strength and song mm -hmm. and has become my salvation. Mm -hmm. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. Wait, read that again. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. Now, the book of life tells us that in the Lord's tabernacles, synagogues, sanctuary should be the voice of of rejoicing the book of life teaches us that 
The book of life teaches us that, listen, when we get together, it should be rejoicing in the Lord because all things are his will. And he purposed all things. Our job is to serve the Lord with joyfulness and gladness. So his scripture says, guess, guess what? When we're in his tabernacle, when we're in his, his sanctuary, when we're in his synagogue, we should be in a rejoicing spirit. All of the stuff, the gloom and doom, leave that stuff at home. When it's time to get together, guess what? We're going to rejoice in the Lord. Go ahead. The voice of rejoicing and salvation mm -hmm. is in the tabernacles of the righteous. Mm -hmm. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. Mm -hmm. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. Mm -hmm. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. Mm -hmm. I shall not die, hmm. but live hmm. and declare the oh, work. Oh, 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 oh. Can you read that again? Psalms chapter 118, verse 17. I shall not die, but live. I shall not die, but live. Go ahead. And declare the works of the Lord. Because in, when we live is how we declare the works of the Lord. The book of life guides us on how we should live. And in that process, we're declaring the glorious works of the Lord. So if you go back into the world, you're not declaring the works of the Lord. Hmm. You're not. It's in your time of having wisdom, using wisdom through the commandments of the Lord, you're able to declare the works of the Lord. Perfect example. You were a damn um, stick up kid. When you read the commandments, when you learn the commandments, when you're taught the commandments, thou shalt not steal, so on and so forth, deal falsely, uh, whatever. Not whatever, but so on and so forth. You say, you know what? Damn, I got to stop robbing people. I got to get a job. You changing your ways is declaring the works of the Lord. You changing your ways and letting your light shine it, as a beacon unto the unrepentant of our people is a glorious work that the Lord needs to be exalted for. And I've, I mentioned this before. Listen, 15 years ago, Israelite Bible. What? No, nah, I'm saying more than that. I say 20 years ago. Bible. What? I'm trying to get this money. You must be crazy. You can't tell me nothing. I was one of those knuckleheads. You could you can't tell me anything. So a lot of times we look at we look for miracles like, oh, why y'all can't raise nobody from the dead? Why y'all can't uh 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 do this miracle, do that miracle. Listen, I, I'm a walking miracle. That's right. And I, I don't want to sound like a daggone Christian, but I'm that's for real. I'm sure many brothers and sisters can attest to that. The fact that we changed from what we were is a miracle of God. That's right. I'm gonna tell you straight. It's a it's of the Lord. That thing is a miracle. So the choice is: do I continue to show the power of the Lord? Or do I go back into the world and make Christ a laughing stock? Which way do I want to take it? No, if I stay here still executing wisdom, still uh, uh, applying what I'm learning, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to glorify the Lord. And that's pleasing unto him. It's going to glorify the Lord. So why would I want to go back to the filth that he delivered me from? What prophet is that? Hmm. Read uh, verse 17 again. Psalms chapter 118, verse 17. Mm -hmm. I shall not die, but live. So this is, this is when we make the decision, say, listen, there's nothing for me back in that world. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Okay, nothing. And here's something I want to share with y'all too. When you... I want you to think about this. Not saying that you can't fall back into the world if you change your name. But imagine you back in, the, you, you say you, you back in the club. You want to be a DJ again in the strip club. DJ, DJ uh, Shamaya Israel, back to the booth, please. 
DJ Shamaya Israel, you're like, damn, it reminds you. That I thought I left that Negro mentality alone. Imagine, imagine DJ Shamaya Israel. Are you serious? In this, in the, no, in the, it's my in the strip club. Not if you DJ like you know events or whatever. But I'm talking about like you in a strip club. Boom, 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 boom. Like that doesn't even go together. <laughs> it doesn't even go together. I don't know that was a sidebar, but I had to say that. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It, 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 it helps to keep you away from the old man you used to be. Not saying it's impossible. Not saying it's a barrier and full protector. No, it's not. But it, um, but it helps you. It's like a constant reminder. Every time they on the last week, Israel, can you come to the front? Israel, can you, Israel. Damn, I'm Israel. Damn it, I'm Israel. I'm Israel. Or when you, or when you, you know, you're in the hotel, you call downstairs for something. Good morning, Mr. Israel. Oh shoot. Good morning. Good morning. Top of the cheerio, pip pip, Mr. Israel. <laughs> All praises. It's it's a constant reminder. But when they're like, yeah, Mr. Cleophis. Uh, yeah. Got and listen. Every little bit we can, we can, we can. We can do in order to stay in this truth, in order to stay reminded, stay focused. Matter of fact, uh, give me that in um, is it in Maccabees? Um, I want the, there's one in Timothy's and give me the one in Second Peter, one and thirteen. And I'm about, I'm about to end it in a second, y'all. Second Peter. Chapter 1, verse 13. Come on. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. So now, as long as we're alive, as long as we're still in these bodies, it's our job to put you in remembrance, to stir up your minds. Okay, go ahead. Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle. Because shortly we're going to die. We're going to die. Go ahead. Even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. So even after we die, we always want to keep putting things in your mind to help you stay in the spirit, to help you stay in line. And I see the sister said, um, my family will clown me for real. So. So. It's not listen, and, it, and it's and uh, listen. I ain't. I'm not. I'm personally not forcing anybody to do anything. Okay, most I put in your spirit. He did it to all of us at a different time. Most I put in your spirit to do it. Go ahead and do it. But you have to always remember anything that will help you stay in the spirit. We got to try to do because this fight is for real. I don't know if any of y'all know it, but this fight we're in is for real. Okay, and here's the thing. Sometimes uh, I know some some of your family might, like you said, might clown you. Coworkers might, and a lot of times we don't want to we don't want to stir up with like a like a wasp nest. We don't want to stir that up. At work, you've been there for twenty years, and they know you as Cleophas Johnson. Now to walk in there and say my name is Jeremiah Israel, they're gonna say what? Who the hell? Right, man, your mama named you Cleophas. I know your mama. I know your grandmama. Your name is Cleophas. I'm gonna call you Cleophas. They try to do it to Muhammad Ali. Your mama named you Cassius. I'm going to call you Cassius. But sometimes we have to care about what the Lord cares about more than what man says. Because at the end of the day, your family has no bearing on your salvation unless you allow them to take you out of this truth. What they say doesn't matter. And we have to start getting thicker skin. What my family says, my coworkers think, I don't care. Listen. Every one of them that came in, I said, listen, I did a name change. My name is uh, Shemaiah Israel. You can call me, you call me Shem for short or Israel because they're not going to remember Shemaiah. And they were like, what? 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 But it did start some conversation. According to Isaiah 44, I, I gave them the scriptures why I did it. Some people asked, 
Some people was like, yeah, all right. Some of them try to be funny and disrespectful, still call by my own name, and I got to check them. What I do is when they call my own name, I stand, I keep doing like I never heard them. And they're like, oh, yeah, you changed your name, right? Like, oh, yeah, you knew that. <laughs> you knew that. I, I just can't keep up. Yeah, it's really hard to keep up with another name. It was only, only two names, only two. Sometimes you got to ignore them. Whatever, whatever it takes to keep you in the spirit. Whatever it takes to keep you in the spirit. All right. Hey, uh, hey, Officer Johannan, don't tell. Is your real name Cleophis? Cause you said not Cleophis. Hey, it might be. You might be the only Reubenite with a name like Cleophis, not Chief Running Barefoot. <laughs> but um, um, I'll just end it there. I'll end it there. If there's any questions, I'll take questions. Any questions? I'll take questions. Now that we uh, touched the name change real quick. Mm, Proverbs 22 and 1. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1. Mm -hmm. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And loving. Wait, 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 wait. Read it again. A good name is rather to be chosen. A good name is preferred to be chosen than great riches. Than great riches. What is in what is good about Tyrone? What is good about Shakwanika says a good name is rather to be chosen because that's talking about your character as well, but also spiritually, because in second Ezra seven says that our name is put out of the earth. That name has to be chosen as well because we would lose our identity. All of our names have meanings, has meanings according to our forefathers. Okay. Cap is Baruch the Greek name of Jeremiah? No. Baruch was Jeremiah's scribe. Baruch was Jeremiah's scribe. They're not the same person. Go to um, Jeremiah 36 and 4. Jeremiah chapter 36, verse 4. Then Jeremiah called Baruch the son of Neriah. So now he called Baruch the son of Neriah. And I go to Baruch one and one. My mom named me after a hurricane. <laughs> so that means you're gonna you're a destroyer. I don't I don't know. I don't know, sis. Baruch chapter one verse one, mm -hmm. and these are the words of the book which Baruch the son of Neriah, the son of Neriah, same. So it's the same person in the book of Jeremiah. Baruch is Jeremiah's scribe. As Jeremiah uh, spoke with the Lord, Baruch wrote it down. Baruch wrote it down. All right. Um, give me one second. I saw another one. Captain, did King David write the books of Psalms during the time of his troubles during 1st and 2nd Samuel? The time of Psalms, that, that I don't know. The time he wrote it, but I know he did talk about, he spoke much about um, uh, his, his, per his perils or attempted perils or the enemies uh, coming up against him and, and, and com compassing about him, so on and so forth, time and time again. So it would make sense to write it during the midst of, but the timeline is not clear. It's not clear. It's not clear. Because um, like when you read Psalms 34, when he talks about having a loathsome disease, so you can tell that's at the actual moment, okay? Actually, let me get that real quick. Is it Psalms 34? Because I think he says he has a loathsome disease, so it was present tense. Give me one second. Um, Psalms. Um, 
Um, bear me one second, y'all. Psalms 38, not 34. Psalms 38. Psalms chapter 38, verse 5. My, well, I'll start. I'll jump to verse 7. Verse 7. For my loins are filled with a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. So he says, my, I'm filled with a loathsome disease. Go to... um. Um, go, go jump over to chapter 41, verse 3. Psalms chapter 41, verse 3. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Mm -hmm. That will make all his bed in his sickness. Go ahead. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mm -hmm. My enemies speak evil of me. Mm -hmm. When shall he die and his name perish? Mm -hmm. And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. Mm -hmm. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. Mm -hmm. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. Mm -hmm. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. So David spoke about the time when he had the loathsome disease. And afterwards, while he, you know, time has passed, the enemy spoke about his evil disease, basically mocking him. So it's 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 a contextually, it's a time span. It's a time span. Um, Psalms fifty one. That's the Bathsheba. Psalms fifty one. When he was like um, Persian, it's like after. Yeah, going. Yeah, go. He went went into Bathsheba. Right, 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 right. So the time span. Yes, the t it's a, it's a time span from the time of um him being chosen as king to the time when he's on the before he he was made king and under king saul running from king saul to the time of um what his son did to him uh, uh and, and how he was attempted attempts on his life so on and so forth so psalms does cover a the span like you mentioned first samuel second samuel uh, and even into probably into uh early part of first kings so, yeah, but it doesn't give an exact timeline, all right? Um, I told you, yo, Alabama be, sister be having these questions, man. Alabama, Sister Eliana, shalom, sis. Captain, when did Japheth serve in the tents of Shem after Noah cursed him? When did Japheth serve in the tents of Shem? I, I will have to look that up. I'll, I'll get back to you, sis. I'll have to look that up. <laughs> Sister Joseph says my 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 uh my ex father in law's name is really Cleophas Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> you a prophet, cat. Oh, uh, well, let me write down, Sister. Um, I'm gonna forget. This is the Eliana's question. You know, I out of all out of all the places, I think Alabama sisters be asking the serious question like. Like, damn, I gotta really think about that. All praise, Sister Felice. I'm glad you're not tearing nothing up anymore. Hey, oh, hey, Shalom Perez. Most high in Christ bless you, bro. I've changed mine. All praises. What does that mean? Uh I'm not sure what you're referring to, Calvin. Elred the Watchman, Shalom, bro. Yes, David. Yeah, David had an STD. Yes. That's um. That's showing. Yeah, most listen. Most I wasn't. Most I don't play. Most I's not playing. And I've mentioned it before. I should. I really do want to go over David. Um, 
at some point. David. <sighs> All praise is to Ariel. Um, I don't see anything else. All praises. All right, I'm gonna end it there then. All praises, sister. Um, I know you're in Alabama, but I know you're in Alabama, sis. Yes. Eliana. All right, Israel. All praise to the Most High. I pray the class was edifying. I pray we apply what we've learned, knowing that the book of life is only for you, 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 you. And that we could be profitable servants unto the Lord, our God. All right, Israel. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom.